Hello and welcome to the 87th video in this series program of Chess Engine C. So last video uh, somebody made a comment quite rightly that Vice crashes when trying to allocate nearly 2 gigabytes of memory. And yep, crashes on my computer as well with um, 32 and 64 bit versions. The reasons behind this are to do, I think anyway to be honest, with um, allocation of large amounts of memory in one place. I had a look at the code actually for some other engines, see how they do it, and it involves actually changing the allocation code quite a bit here, and I don't really see any reason for doing that at this stage, seeing as it's only a simple engine. And um, I've set the max now at one gigabyte, which definitely works under all circumstances. But what was really helpful also from this comment is it reminded me that I hadn't actually done anything with the return value of M alloc here, so memory allocation should really test whether the allocation failed or not so is your pointer null or not and if it does do something so what I'm doing is is recursively calling init hash table each time dividing the number of megabytes by two until memory could be allocated and also at the start in vice in the main function I've already set the table pointer here to null as well so that nothing goes wrong with the call to the the, the free here either so a bit of a cleanup required there um, Apart from that, I think everything seems okay. So this video is the last in this series. It's the release of Vice version 1.0. Um, what I've done is I've created a little package uh, called Vice 1.0 with a 32-bit version, which is Vice 1.0, and also with a 64-bit version I've also compiled. So for pure 64-bit, on my 64-bit, well, two of the 64-bit computers I have, there's almost no difference between the speed between the t uh, in speed between the two of them, whether I run the 32 or 64-bit on a 64-bit computer. Source is there, and I've made a little README as well, where the font is massive on this screen because I've set it that way for the screencasting, but it looks a bit more normal on a normal sort of uh, browser settings. But it's just got a little bit of detail about Vice, a link to the playlist, a link to the download. Um, of course, it's a bit of a catch-22 because you need to have downloaded this to actually get the link to the download, but I'll put the download link obviously in the YouTube information, video information for this video. A description of what's in this version 1.0 1, and also a reminder of some of the links that have been discussed um, during the series programming this engine. So the question then is really what does the future hold? Well, I'm, I enjoyed doing this series a lot, and it was nice to have some comments and to see that people were hopefully finding it useful. So I'm going to do three sort of series in parallel. One of them is I'm going to carry on working on Vice and improving it, and there are a lot of things to do uh, to improve Vice. I can put in straight away PVS, Principal Variation Search, which is essentially where if you have an alpha cutoff, you then search the rest of the moves with, instead of having our uh, alpha to beta window, you have alpha to alpha plus one window with the assumption that your move ordering is good enough that you won't beat alpha with anything else and then if you do you have to research with a normal window. Um, but usually these researches cost less than the overall benefit of this uh, sort of zeroing of the alpha window search. So I'll put that in and test it. The hash table really needs improving because it's using this always replace scheme um, I need to look at uh, hit rates and stuff like that and change its scheming. So probably introduce um, a timestamp system, so a date system into the entries so it replaces entries from older searches, but maybe depth only in the current search. Things like this, but certainly to do some looking at the hash table. Maybe also trying to store in more than one place to try and improve the hit rates and how many, how, how quickly the hash table also gets filled in searches. Other improvements are in the quiescent search uh, is, is things like um, say you've got pawn takes queen as a, um, as a move um, you probably don't need and and if this material gain of say around 900 points is going to take you above beta then you probably need to search any more moves because even if your pawn gets recaptured for free uh, you're still going to be winning anyway, so you can just return straight away. Think uh, you can do things like this in, inside the queue search um, to try and avoid searching needless captures. You can we can maybe do something here also where we define what maybe is a bad capture and not searching those 
also to prune some nodes from the QSearch tree. Obviously I need to improve the evaluation, particularly in the end game where it doesn't have any and it cost in the test against TSCP a lot of points with things like bishop and pawn versus bishop, rook pawns, so rook, uh, so rook pawn versus king, um, things like this uh, where it, if it had known these end games it would have gone on a different path I'm sure in the end game. And also things like uh, pass pawn side by side versus a rook on the sixth rank that usually win. If king being near to a pass pawn. All, all sorts of things like this would offer really big improvements, I think, in the strength of vice for little extra code. And another thing that's important also probably in the search is extensions. Um, particularly at the low depths that vice has at the moment. So things like if a pawn's reached the seventh rank, then extend, maybe even extend the depth, uh, maybe even with the 6th rank because it's absolutely terrible at detecting as most engines are at this, uh, at this at the depth of ice reach, is terrible at detecting past pawns until it's too late uh, so um, yes, extensions need to go in and the other thing is probably root move ordering as well um, I'll add in another function that replaces the alpha beta at the first depth essentially. So the first call to alpha beta will be a root alpha beta and then we can do some more and better ordering of the root moves and also print out the current best move found live rather than just simply a principal variation at the end of each depth. And the other really essential thing I think which will bring a lot of strength or a bit of strength hopefully is time, and I can't spell, time management. At the moment it's simply churns through until its time is finished but there are loads of things you can do here so for instance you can look at how long the previous ply took before you start the current ply and estimate whether you're even going to complete the current ply or not and you can also look when you've got this root search as well maybe at how the score is changing between each depth and maybe increase or decrease the time depending on whether you think you're finding yourself in trouble or you've maybe found a win or things are just pretty static and there's probably above a given depth no point in carrying on the search. So time management I think could win a lot so that it spends more time when it's in trouble to get out and less time when it's actually in an easy position searching unnecessarily. The other thing maybe to add is an opening book as well although I would be tempted to do this using something called Polyglot, which is a program programmed by the author of a really good and groundbreaking open source engine called Fruit, and he made an adapter for Wimboard and UCI protocols, and inside there are bookmaking functions where the hash keys for the positions are hard-coded in, and you can take those hash keys and actually build some book functions into the program to be able to use book opening books generated by Polyglot so you can use your own PGN files to generate your own opening books and then supply an opening book with the engine. Or because polyglot books are used a lot by testers in the community, having this book function may be useful in itself to give your engine the use of different books, if not going through the GUI. Okay, so enough on that. So the one thing about the Vice Improvement series is it won't be as quick as this series because I've explained in the previous video testing improvements is uh, a slow process because of the number of games. There is no point in saying I'll put PVS in because it will improve it and leaving it. it. You have to test it and have a look if it actually does improve the engine or not because a lot of these things you get surprised, particularly let's say King Safety in the end game. Vice beat TSCP over 60 games with exactly the same search, very similar depth, but despite not having King Safety and pawns attacking the king and open files against the king, it still beat TSCP so it's not always a guarantee to add something simply think it will improve the strength because they often offset other uh, important pieces in the evaluation. Okay so enough on that vice improvement series I'm then going to do a series on because of a comment on implementing a bitboard move generator using magic bitboards and I'll start that off by explaining how you generate these so-called magic numbers and I'm not going to explain any more about that I'll do that in this series itself and probably then plug this generator or hack into a version of Vice adding in the Bitboard Move Generator. And if it's nice and I like it, then I might even leave it there and replace the 120 based array that's in Vice at the moment. And I'll do another one then on 0x88 boards as well and explain how they work and show how that move generation works and why it's used as well. <clears throat>
So that's it then for this series. Uh, that's Vice 1.0. I hope you've enjoyed the series. I've really enjoyed doing it, and it's also rekindled a bit my motivation with computer chess. So yes, that's it. Have a good day, and bye. Thanks a lot.